who we are and stuff. Abby and Brittany were born with just one body between them. The only known surviving dicephalus conjoined twins, they've spent their lives in a small, close-knit community, completely protected from prying eyes. The girls live on a farm in Minnesota, with their younger brother and sister, Cody and Morgan, and their mum and dad, Patty and Mike. As they reach 16, and on the brink of womanhood, they've decided to show the world what it's really like to be joined for life. Adam Brent, how you doing? Oh, mommy, no! I know. Jesus, you make me mad. It's just an ordinary Monday morning in the Hensel household. I needed more sleep. <laughs> Abby and Brittany aren't morning people, and I think that's primarily because they have a harder time getting to sleep at night. It's fine. Don't touch it. So they do a lot of tossing and turning at night and, and the bed is pretty much destroyed every morning. And so getting up in the morning isn't their favorite part of the day. Every moment of their lives requires the twins to cooperate with each other. Each action is a display of perfectly coordinated teamwork. They appear to be totally in sync, but that doesn't mean they always agree. Believe me, we are totally different people. Abby is more into like pink and girly and preppy, and Brittany's more not into pink. Should we wear this? No. How about this? No. I like hats and I like different color hair, like pink and purple and gold hats, hats. and gold purses and weird earrings and stuff like that. This is our room. We usually bargain with each other. Like, if you do this, I'll give you that, or, or we take turns. We take turns a lot. This is our nightstand. This is our bed. Those are pictures of our friends from eighth grade. To describe Abby, she'd be bossy, and she's not as loud as she used to be. She used to be more outspoken. Um, she gets irritated easily, and I don't know. She's nice, and she likes people. She likes to be with people, and she's a big talker, and yeah. Brittany has become more um, outspoken and she says her mind more than she's not so shy anymore. Um, she doesn't like fast things. She's ra she'd rather go slower and take her time. She's nice and sweet and caring and loving and a good sister. Abby and Brittany were born on March the 7th, 1990. The fact that they were conjoined twins was a complete shock to everyone. Even scans had shown only one baby. When I went into the hospital, I was expecting one child. They were telling me that when they were trying to pull them out, they felt an arm, and then they felt another arm, and then they felt what they thought was another arm. And then with pulling them out, they realized that they were conjoined twins. They didn't really tell me anything initially. They um, pretty much whisked them off to the baby warmer, and, and I know they were calling for more help, and and I just seen them busy over with the girls. When the doctors came out, I noticed that they were uh, in a panic. And uh, they just came and talked to me and told me that uh, we had uh, twins that were together. They were beautiful. Abby was crying. And while well, Brittany was too, Abby was really crying. And I was thinking they were probably just hungry. The first time I seen him, uh, just, it just didn't take uh, but a second to, to fall in love with him. Abby and Brittany had only a one in 30 million chance of living beyond the next 24 hours. Their survival would all depend on how their organs were configured within their tiny body. Queen Charlotte's Hospital in London specializes in the most complicated twin pregnancies. Professor Nick Fisk has followed the case of Abby and Brittany since they were born. I have never seen previously a set of surviving diacephalous twins, so they are extraordinarily rare, and they're the only ones, to my knowledge, alive today. They do appear to have um, 
two separate hearts, one in each side of the, the, the chest, and each has its own pair of lungs, one on the right and one on the left, but the medial lung in, in, on both sides seems to be fused in the middle, and that may be as one would expect. So it's consistent with an increasing degree of, of fusion as one moves down the body. Abby and Brittany had three arms at birth, and, and that often happens, but it was a useless midline arm that didn't function, so it was removed um, when they were very young. One presumes the art looks better if you have four or even three arms than if you have two, because it indicates a greater degree of duplication of the upper body. Abby and Brittany had three, and that may have something to do with why they're doing so well. They just seemed to do everything on schedule. You know, they lifted their heads on schedule, they moved, they smiled, they ate. You know, everything just was working. You could see them progressing every day. Uh, you'd, one day you'd see them grabbing onto the coffee table and the next day you'd come home and they'd be walking around it. Every step was uh, not easy, but they got it done. To the medical world, Abby and Brittany were an astonishing case, confounding all expectations of dicephalus conjoined twins. With their bodies so closely linked, it was clear separation was out of the question. So their parents got on with giving them as ordinary a life as possible. But with so little knowledge of their condition, there would be no guarantees. Conjoined twins Abby and Brittany Hensel have mystified the medical world since they were born. They share just one torso, two arms and two legs, although each twin controls her own side of the body. Nobody knows how they work. But their personalities make them inspirational, and the things they do, they never give up, they keep trying. Anything they've wanted to do, they go out and do it. At birth, it was thought to be a miracle that the girls survived even the first 24 hours of life. But as they grew, it became clear nothing would stand in the way of them leading full and active lives. Then, at the age of 12, it was discovered that they had a life-threatening condition. Abby and Brittany's rib cages were fused together, and their spines were growing outwards rather than upwards. The girls had to undergo a major operation to stop their lungs running out of air. Eventually, the girls were discharged from hospital. They'd gained two inches in height and were fit to live life to the full. There's no physical challenge that Abby and Brittany are not prepared to tackle head on. Their degree of motor coordination is really quite extraordinary. It's not as good as your eye. It's not finely tuned, but it's pretty amazing. And how does that happen? Well, there's absolutely no degree of fusion of their spinal columns. They're, they're completely separate. And we can see this in the X-ray of their pelvis here. They have a single pelvis but two separate sacrums, which is the lower part of the vertebral column. So I don't think anyone can explain how this happens. Um, they will be getting cues from things like skin tugging and stretching from the other one's side of the body, cues that they've had to learn to adapt to all their life, just in the same way that um, a person who is blind has incredible hearing skills, or a person who's deaf has incredible visual skills at lip reading. Abby and Brittany are about to undertake the ultimate test of their extraordinary skills. As their 16th birthdays approach, they're coming of age the American way and learning to drive. Okay, today we're taking Cody for two hours of uh, placement testing for high school and then Ab and Britt are going to their last two hours of driver's training. It's so normal for me to have Ab and Britt that I'm sure I overlook a lot of things that other people look at and say, man. Maybe when people tell me something that they see as spectacular with Ab and Britt, that it, it brings me back down to, yeah, they are spectacular. Okay, all right, let's get going. Got to load up or we're going to be driving girls? Why not? Everything that they have done, from riding bike 
to driving the lawn more, to riding horses, to swimming, I never thought that driving would be an obstacle for them. In fact, I felt they were going to have an advantage having four eyes looking for a car versus just two eyes. Abby likes driving faster than me. <laughs> Why do you like to drive fast, Abby? Because you get there faster and it's more fun. Driving made me nervous uh, just because they're girls and they're talking and they got so much going on, friends, school, uh, just uh, everyday stuff for them. But it did make me nervous. I just thinking that they weren't concentrating enough on driving. Hi. How you doing? Good. You guys ready? Yeah. Uh, today I'm working with the girls. Okay. It's their final lesson before they take their test uh, on Tuesday. They're really pretty good. Uh, their mom and dad have done a lot of work with them. They have to maneuver together, and one of the things that I noticed the first one we first went out was they were cutting their left turns a little bit. For behind the wheel, we had to have six hours of driving with an instructor. Um, we learned how to parallel park and 90-degree um, parking and other things. This one? No, right down here by the cars. Between the two cars, we'll go make it a little tougher for you. Oh, that's for sure. I got enough for a little bit. A little further. All right. Put it in reverse, hard to the right, until you get to that 45 degree angle. Keep going, keep going. All right, now straighten it. Hard the other way now. Hard as you can. Keep going, you're doing great. Super job, excellent, even better than last time. Okay, and then straighten it and go up just a little bit. Abby takes over the pedals and the shifter and I take over the and we both we both steer we both steer and I take over the blinker and the lights we gotta go where we're going so we know where we're going or we have to we know what turn we have to take The driving's quite extraordinary, but you notice that Abby controls the pedals. That's one of the key things, both the accelerator and the brake. So her brain controls that side of it, and that seems fine. It's not quite clear which one's visual input's going into the driving, the steering wheel, but yet each has control of either side. This verifies the fact they've completed their six hours, which is required by the state, and then Abby's going to say... And Abigail? This, yeah, this card along with your permit you'll need. Okay. And that's yours. Thank you. Abby and Brittany are all ready, but the state hasn't decided yet if they'll be taking one driving test or two. They decide to be on the safe side and take two sets of ID photos. Oh well, I'm done. The girls go to the local high school, just a few miles from their home. Over the years, the teachers and other pupils have had to learn how to treat them as two separate students with different interests and abilities. He's like coffee, yummy. Yeah. Hi. There's ice cream in my eye. Mr. Buzuki turns 60. Mr. Buzuki turns 60. Have a seat one more time. I understand you're a little rowdy. Don't be. Your own they are very, very different. Abby is, uh, I, I would say, a little more outgoing. Um, certainly she's uh, more able to question and to demand answers and attention, both in class. Mr. Buzuki, for the murder accounts, or I mean the rape accounts, is it just how they described them? Yes. So how Megella described it and how... I find myself probably joking with her more a little bit. He's so old, he's going senile. She's taking a quiz, go. <laughs> with Brittany, I think she's a little more quiet, a little more reserved, thinks 
through some things, uh, maybe not quite as, a, as, as assertive, certainly more contemplative. In their more practical classes, the school has agreed that the twins only need to submit one piece of work between them. But in English, they're treated completely separately. And so we came across the plan of that they would uh, write their own papers together and uh, tests and quizzes and any kind of in-class participation would be done and integrated separately. They do answer things differently. They do think differently. Uh, both of them will always have, always have separate grades. The girls have faced many challenges in life, but making friends isn't one of them. They're social butterflies. They have been since they started preschool. I think when they're the happiest is when they're, they have their friends over. Yeah, any time that they're involved with their friends makes them happy. So like, guess what? I'm having a party for my graduation and you're invited. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. How are you, darling? I guess I'm a little more protective when, if they want to go down, downtown. Sometimes worry a little bit that if they did get picked on or anything like that. I, don't, I just don't want them to hear anything negative. Their social group is so protective of them that they all watch out for them. And if they see even somebody that might be looking at them, they hover around them and they, they try and protect them. And, and they're comfortable with that. And if their friends are doing that, it makes them feel good that they would be protecting them. While the girls are most comfortable at school, their least favorite place is the doctor's surgery. Today is their routine 16-year-old medical. Their GP, Dr. Joy Westerdahl, was at their birth and has followed the girls' development all their lives. But even she has very little information to go on. Hi, Hi girls. Hi. The family have always refused to have any non-essential tests carried out on the girls, despite great interest from the medical profession. You guys been enjoying your summer? No. no. <laughs> Why not? You have to work a lot. Ooh. We're all set. Well, let's talk to Wester. I'll know that you guys are here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. While they are unique, the family wants to treat them as though they are just like everyone else. I'm going to have to pull your shoes up. We're obviously making sure that they're fit for sports, they're fit for their activities at school, that they're able to engage in social behaviors. Those are not unique to the girls. However, because they have two hearts, lungs, circulatory systems that are conjoined, I'm looking to make sure they're not developing premature high blood pressure, respiratory problems, are they prone to more infections? So there's a little bit more work, but I have to be mindful of the family's wishes not to get too involved in that. Over the years, Dr. Westerdahl has been astonished and mystified by what the girls have achieved. Good. 108 over 70. That's great. The process of their ability to come together is fascinating for me as a, as a primary care doctor because above the waist, they seem to function independently, and yet they can clap even though one controls one arm and the other controls the other. I ask them periodically um, what they feel and sense. One girl cannot sense touching on the other girl's arm and vice versa. So it's very interesting. You're a lazy person. She is. Your ears have been okay? Yes. Okay. Let me see the other one. Peek. What I don't know about Abby and Brittany is exactly how the pathophysiology works. We, we guesstimate what's happening in their bodies, and it would be nice to predict their future. Everyone asks, how long? You know, what do you expect for the future for these girls? Well, I expect them to live healthy, normal, happy lives, but it would be sort of nice to know, you know, how that circulatory system is going to play out. Would I like to do lots of testing? Yeah. Would the parents want that done? Would the children want that done? No. There would be a long queue of scientists um, with really very modern techniques of imaging brain and nervous system function who would love to find out what one feels when you do something to one's arm, how the music centres are organised, sense of space and movement, etc. 
Um, and you can do those now with very clever brain scans that will look for subtle alterations in blood flow or in, the metabol in, in metabolism within the brain that shows us which particular centers are activated. Now, this is, these techniques are making huge strides in advancing our knowledge of how the brain works and in particularly in developing treatments for various diseases as a result. This is a highly unusual situation and one does have to be cautious here that there is a danger of medical science being driven largely by curiosity at a clear cost to the family. I want to go home. Okay, bye now. Oh, all right. So, bye now. Abby and Brittany's big day finally arrives. On my 16th birthday, we got up and we went to get our driver's license. The day we went for the written permit, we weren't sure what they were going to have them do, if they were going to have them take one test or two tests. They really didn't take any special things for us. They just made us take the test twice. They wanted to do their driver's test the day they turned 16, even though I said, you know, if you failed, you want that on your birthday. Making legal history in the state of Minnesota, the twins take their two tests and hope for the best. Two tests also means two chances to fail, but for these girls, failure isn't an option. Dana Dreyer! Huh? I passed. I passed. Yeah. Good job. See you later. Have a day, guys. Thank you. Hi. I have a present for you guys. Yeah. Oh, I have... Thank you. I've talked with Abby and Brittany about, you know, what happens if if they are pulled over, if they would each get a ticket, or maybe Abby would get the ticket if they were speeding, being she has her foot on the accelerator. I don't know. I, there, we'll just have to see what happens when it hopefully doesn't happen. The goal is, of course, to hide it. The twins take their driving triumph in their stride, but others are still fascinated by how they pulled it off. So how we decided who's in charge of the radio. I'm intrigued by this. Good. So your windshield wipers and cruise control, and your radio and defogger. And and the gas and the brake. Oh, oh I you're the gas. Oh. I assume now you'll be freaking out uh, policemen across the state. I already got over. I didn't even have, I had no permit clear. She lied. She said lied. So, uh, <laughs> and cut. <laughs> Make a pitch. Now that Abby and Brittany have reached their 16th birthdays, their lives are entering an exciting but potentially more difficult phase. Definitely, they're 16 now, so I'm hearing things come out of teenage mouths that surprise me sometimes. But deep down, when the day is over, I know they love me, and <laughs> I don't know why I'm going to cry about that. Abby's driver's license, and this is Brittany's driver's license. Conjoined twins Abby and Brittany Hensel are living the American dream. They're 16 and have just passed their driving tests, and they're enjoying every moment of their new freedom. <laughs> we like to drive when we no, I can't say it. Never mind. Okay, Just keep going. No. Don't. I don't I'll say it. I'll say it. Okay. Our favorite part about driving is when we um turn all the way. Oh, brother. Mm. Okay. Put, put, put. We 
like driving when we can put roll, roll. Oh, that's the word. Okay, start over, stop. Okay, we like driving when we roll all the windows down, turn the bass and the treble up really loud so the car shakes and you can hear the bass really well when you're listening to rap. That's our favorite part. They gradually increased their speed as they got comfortable. They used to drive 30 miles an hour for the first few times at it and gradually built up their speed and were comfortable with it knowing they had gained the control of the car. Now I've got to remind them to watch their speed before I had to tell them to speed up. What? Oh, that was so much fun. Christine us, we were driving with Christine and we tried to hit all the bad animals, animals on, on the road. road. How did that work? That was bumpy. <laughs> The twins' family know that they're two people with different personalities, tastes, needs and desires. And as they grow up, those differences are becoming more obvious. That's an ugly coffee table. I like it. Uh, Abby's very feisty. Uh, I have no thoughts. I have to go. Abby always likes to be the boss of the whole house, the boss of Cody. Oh. Don't put that stuff on mine, Cody. I don't want that on there. Okay. Wow. Boss of Morgan. Wash them off. Why are you on the carpet with those? Get down. Likes to tell me how I should do things. <laughs> Mom! The concert starts at 7. Be there on time. Brittany. Uh, easy going, easy to talk to, but is finding out that she's got a mind of her own also. Do you mind? Where she's uh, pulling uh, control every now and then. Are you telling them what I told you to tell them? That's your problem. See you later. Now, and I always tell her, oh, Brittany, you've discovered you've got vocal cords and you can yell at me now. Do you want me to get those necklaces I mean, on? Brit no, I'm not wearing those. So Brittany is almost like the firecracker of the two right now. Can I um, dye my hair? Not today. Tone. Yeah, I want to. We've had a couple years of teen teens for them already, and actually, I hope that I'm right. I think it's getting better. You should, no, don't, no. Uh -uh. Without no, no. extensive to tests to establish exactly how Abby and Brittany's brains and bodies work, theories about their remarkable connection are confined to what the girls are able to explain and a certain amount of guesswork. Your good knife skills aren't, like, perfected yet. Here, let me do that. There are still times when I think, Geez, how did they figure that out? Or how it's just amazing how they did that. How they could reach over and itch somebody's mosquito bite and yet not feel that sensation. Because Abby pretty much feels what, what's on her side of the body, and Brittany feels what's on her side of the body. How is that? Hot? There you go. Beyond the physical coordination, there seems to be a psychological bond between the girls, which goes even deeper, allowing them to finish each other's sentences or jointly compose an email with very little discussion out loud. When we're IMing or writing emails, we normally just say I am or not we are for some reason. I don't know why, but when we type but we say what we're gonna say out loud like we speak it and then we type it and if like we have a different opinion on something we'll be like Abby says this and Brittany says that hello hi Nancy and it's not just the girls and their family who can't fully explain this incredible connection this occurred very early after conception the um, nervous system will have been developing only a few weeks later and I presume sort of great plasticity involved nervous connections that don't normally exist in, in any of us. But you can't really have motor fibres going down one spine and back up the other one or you shouldn't be able to. We don't really know. I suspect they have some greater form of perception of sensation on the other hand, other half of the body, than perhaps we realize. Touch is a fairly crude one, but they may just have some sense of proprioception, where that other limb is, etc., that enables them to accomplish these extraordinary feats. Where do we get the frog from? Not the damaged one. The one that's ew. Oh, it's out of no, that's so gross. Go ahead and 
take out a piece of paper. We're going to do the same. The girls' parents are often asked if they could have given Abby and Brittany greater individuality by pursuing the idea of separation. With the issue of separation for Abby and Britt, initially as babies, we were told kind of inseparable. We went with that and went with that. Um, you know, now with more surgeries being done with other conjoined twins, you kind of wonder, did we make the right decision? <laughs> when I think of what separating would have been for them, to have another half a body somehow put back on them artificially, which to me still would have required many, many surgeries, pain, disability. It's hurting me. So, you know, did we make the right decision? I'm going with that. They've went with that. And so I guess I'm going to say we made the right decision. Until now, separation has been an impossibility. But if it were possible in the future, do the girls think they'd be better off apart? No, no. There's never, we never wish we were separated because then we wouldn't get to do all the things that we can do, play softball and meet new people. We wouldn't have been able to do that and run and we would be able to do sports and stuff, stuff like, like that. that. So, and we ha don't know any other way, so. We have two minds with one vigorous and healthy body. And to separate them equally so that both survived would involve, yes, a separate mind and personality, but each body having one arm, one leg, half a pelvis, being grossly disabled and, and lots of problems with mobility and independent function. So in general, it's considered a no-brainer and not ethical. Individuality in these girls is going to be a hard concept for us to, to embrace because we each have our own person. These two girls have always grown up together. So their individuality, while they're considered separate people, is always interlinked and intertwined. So it may not be a concept that we can understand. This summer, we'd like to go to the beach. We'd like, we have to work a lot and swim and shop and hang out with friends. School is finally over. Abby and Brittany have a long, hot summer stretching in front of them. Abby wants to go to Disney World because we haven't been there before, and Brittany doesn't want to go to Disney World because she thinks it's too big. What, what does that mean specifically? Like too many people? Or? Yeah. Why don't you like that? Because I just don't. I don't like being around people. A lot of people. The debate about where to go on holiday will have to be resolved later. In the meantime, the girls distract themselves with some retail therapy. Fashion tip number one by Abby and Brittany Hensel. You have to wear nice shirts with good pants. Not good pants with t-shirts. Tip number two, actually do your hair a little bit. Don't just throw it up in a ponytail every day or leave it down. And ponytail we have tip. and t-shirt. Tip number three, yeah. don't wear black with brown. Shopping! Yeah! Oh boy. Abby and Brittany love shopping, but finding the right clothes isn't always straightforward. Those are pretty. I got this in green. It looks cute in purple too. Really? Yeah, they have a purple one if you like. The biggest challenge for them when they go shopping are shirts. I mean, pants have never been an issue. Shoes has never been an issue because they love shoes. But anyway, so the tops are the biggest issue. Stuff like that. I got this, Christy. Patty has come up with a creative solution to the problem. Kim Carlson is the girl's dressmaker. By taking their clothes to her, they can choose whatever they like and have them tailored to fit their unique body. Hey, Kim. Hey, how are you girls doing? Oh, good. So what do we have today? Shirts. Shirts, shirts, shirts. shirts. In the fronts of their garments, we need to make sure they're spaced closer in the front, further on their backs, and so I make sure that I cut away as little as I can for the back and a little bit more in the front. And then we always have to put a piece between the necks to allow for a little more space. Um, that's got to be so it doesn't dig into their necks as much right there. 
this particular one, the girls want to try something different. They want to slice it and tie it and make it a little shorter. In one of their regular displays of teamwork, and without even a word between them, the girls perform the amazing feat of tying perfect knots down the side of their new T-shirt. Oops, come here. I win. Can I try it on, see if it's too tight? Too bad if it is. Just stretch it. <laughs> yep, you're gonna wear it tight. Oh, I don't think it will be. Is that gonna be okay? The uh -huh. length if once we have it? Yeah. Okay. That's cute, girls. Good idea. The Hensel's family holiday is booked. They're going to Texas, where people don't know them, and where there are bound to be stairs. For Brittany in particular, it will be a testing time. But they're going to stay with someone who has a unique understanding of their situation. Tamara had conjoined twins a couple years ago, eight or nine years ago, um, and her girls died about two hours after they were born. And she saw us on TV, so she called the radio or the station, and they gave us, they gave her our number, and we've been friends with her ever since. When I do see Abby and Brittany, um, I reflect back upon the time when I gave birth to my own daughters and truly how their lives would have been together. It makes me sad to remember back to my own children and then what their lives would have been like. And I feel Abby and Brittany have showed me how to be positive in life. They've given me strength from within that I didn't even know I had. Mike can't get enough time off work for the trip, so the girl's best friend, Christy, is going along in his place. She'll be good moral support. Leaving the familiarity of their hometown is a stressful experience for Abby and Brittany, who brace themselves for the unwelcome attention of complete strangers. This curiosity is something they're getting used to, but it doesn't make it any easier. People sometimes can be kind of stupid. They take pictures of us when we're on vacations or follow us. We don't mind when people ask questions. That's better than taking pictures or being mean about it. We're very nice if you just come up to meet and talk to us. We don't mind questions. And we hate, absolutely hate, when people take pictures of us and try to video camera us. And we will throw a fit about it and make them embarrassed. Tamara is determined to give the girls the trip of a lifetime, and she decides to turn their situation to their advantage. She manages to get them special pitch side passes for a major league baseball game. But just before the game starts, the plan backfires. A news cameraman, there to follow the game, turns his camera on the girls. They let him film them, but it spoils their day. Abby and Brittany, number one, I guess, have feelings. There's something that really annoys them, and that's when people feel they have the privilege to just turn around, snap a photo of them without asking them or even talking with them, or it drives them crazy because they feel like they're being violated. Remember? So you guys having a good time? That's something that my Yeah? My, my, my. No, really? No. Is this fun? No. Have you ever done this before? No. No, no, no. These two balls, and that's it, I think. The twins have faced enough stares in their lives not to let it ruin the whole trip. But it's a sharp reminder of what lies ahead of them. Facing adulthood, their fiercely guarded privacy will soon be under threat. Stay 
for you. Thank you. All right, we're done. Let's go home. Abby and Brittany have just two more years at high school before they must decide whether to leave the protective environment of their hometown in Minnesota. They've had 16 years to adapt to their unique situation. But how will the wider world react to two completely separate human beings joined within one body? Um, we might want to go into photography, child development, or st stuff with kids, um, interior designing, architecture, or fashion design. Whatever they decide to do in life, the outside world will have to adapt itself to Abby and Brittany. But I'm intrigued to know, you know, are they going to be uh, hired as one or as two? Are they going to be able to share salaries or do they, you know, all of those things I, I think yet are, are to be determined. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm taking an approach on wait and see, but I, I certainly am looking forward to be a part of that life for another two years. We haven't thought that much about where they would go to college. Um, depending on the day, Brittany has said she's going to be as far away as possible. We know Abby doesn't want to be too far away, so they may. We just don't know that yet. The girls' lives have been a series of questions, but as they become young women, they're being asked increasingly personal ones about their private lives. You know, I hear them and their girlfriends talk about guys, but they probably aren't going to be sharing that with me right now, who they may have a crush on or what they're feeling. But I'm sure they do. I just, the way I see them interact. The whole world doesn't need to know what we're, who we're dating or what we're going to do and everything. Ab and Britt have made comments before that they'd like to be a mother or, you know, how many kids are they going to have kind of thing. That is probably something that could work because those organs do work for them. I guess we haven't went into too much discussion about it because it isn't an issue right now. Yeah, we're going to be moms. We haven't thought about how it's being moms is going to work yet. We're just 16. We don't need to think about that right now. The physiology of a body is very complex, especially when it comes to female reproduction. It's not simply organs, but it's regulated by several centers in the brain. We have two brains that we're working with that have to regulate the ability to have a child. I suspect everything will go normally, but that only time will tell. There's no example of female dicephalous twins marrying or reproducing. Now, you know, it's tricky. Um, do they marry two boys or one? If it's one, um, they're married to two people with separate identities. Is that bigamy or not? Or do they marry two, which makes more sense if you respect their identity separately? Marrying two, though, if marriages don't last and one wants to get divorced, you know, it allows them to choose separate people. But what happens if one gets divorced and then you're stuck with three of you, one wanting to be single but not? And it raises all sorts of questions about are they one or two people and society really has no basis for ruling on this. Hi guys. Hi. We're here. Hi guys. Hi. How are you guys? Hi. How are you? Good. Good. As a first step into adulthood, Abby and Brittany have got a babysitting job and they seem to have a special gift with young children who see them for who they are rather than what they are. Yeah. That tastes sticky, didn't it? Yucky. That yeah, I told you it tastes sticky, didn't I? We babysit for a family of two kids four days a week, and we babysit for a family of three kids every so often during the summer. Does that taste better? Yeah. We like kids a lot. We like to babysit kids, and we needed a job. When the kids met us... Put your hands down. When the kids met us for the first time, they didn't seem bothered by us or scared of us or some whatever. Yeah, come on, let's go. Come on, guys. What's, what are we going to go do? I think people need to look at Abby and Brittany as through the eyes of a child. Come on, guys. Race you. And okay. accept them for what you see. Let's race. I'm going to beat you and quit trying to figure out how does this work, how does that work. 
how do you do this? How do you do that? Who got to pick this? Who did? And just know that it works because you can see that. We may never know how Abby and Brittany work, but isn't it great that they can? Every part of their life is cooperating with each other to make it all go. The best thing about being conjoined twins is there's always someone there to talk to. And you're never alone. So. And there's more from the Extraordinary People series with the profile of Derek Paracini, a blind pianist with learning difficulties. The music genius over on Five Life in just a tick. Next here on Five, Prison Break. <laughs> 